Pastor Ryan here as we come to Lord's Day uh, 38 of the Heidelberg Catechism. Uh, we've been looking at uh, this section of the Catechism, uh, which started really on uh, Lord's Day 34, uh, talking about the Ten Commandments. And so uh, we've moved now to questions, uh, sorry, rather just to question uh, 103. Uh, so today, uh, maybe a little shorter, uh, it's just one question and answer anyway for us today. Lord's Day 38, uh, question 103. What does God require in the fourth commandment? The answer is first, that the ministry of the gospel and the schools be maintained, and that especially on the day of rest, I diligently attend the church of God to hear God's word, to use the sacraments, to call publicly upon the Lord, and to give Christian offerings for the poor. Second, that all the days of my life I rest from my evil works. Let the Lord work in me through his Holy Spirit, and so begin this life, uh, so begin in this life the eternal Sabbath. So there's several components to this. The fourth commandment uh, we should probably name. It's not named uh, there, uh, but it is this. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, by setting apart um, the seventh day of the week. Um, as a as a day, uh, not just of rest. I think that oftentimes, in particular, we translate Sabbath as Sabbath rest, um, and it's it's more uh, than rest. It is not simply ceasing from something, but it is taking respite. It is taking refuge. Um, it is a, a time that is set aside in such a way that we might reorient our lives. Um, when God creates in Genesis chapter 1, um, God creates, of course, uh, everything out of nothing. Uh, he creates order out of chaos as his spirit hovers over the water. He uh, creates everything, uh, not just on earth, um, but the, but the, the atmosphere, the, the heavens above the earth, but then also the heavenly bodies, all of what we would call, um, or I would call anyway, outer space, right? The other planets and the sun and the moon and the, and the stars um, so far away even, God creates all these things. And then in Genesis 1, God talks about the way in which uh, they will be signs uh, for seasons, uh, for certain things to take place. And so we see even in the very beginning before sin is in the world, that there's a rhythm that, that life itself and creation is supposed to have. Now added to that, um, God rests on the seventh day after he has made Adam and Eve on the sixth day and he rests. He says, everything is good. It's very good. And he, and he rests from his labors. And so the origin of, of the Sabbath is, is not in the origin of the Ten Commandments, but it actually is one of the commandments it's, that is not a response to the fallenness of humanity, but it was a call, a clarion call from before the fall, that this is the way in which we're called to live our life, to rest in God, to take a respite in the presence of God. And so in the first part of this, we, we uh, draw away from the world and we, uh, like the church, the ecclesia, we are the called out ones and we are called into community for God, to, with God. So the first part of this is all about our relationship with God and how we orient or reorient our lives in this world to who God is. So these are the things we do. We don't rest. Instead, we attend the church of God. That is, that, that we come together for fellowship on the seventh day, that we hear God's word, uh, and so that the word is preached. There's, there's normally a sermon, there's, there's education, there is input, there is, there is revelation of who God is that comes from God uh, to us, generally through a pastor or a minister. We use the sacraments, uh, that is the time in which we come together uh, to partake of Holy Communion which unfortunately we're not able to do at this time, but we partake of communion on a regular basis. And then the, this is also the day, the time as we are assembled together uh, for, uh, for converts and for children uh, to, uh, to be baptized. You know, those two sacraments, we call publicly upon the Lord. And I want to say a word here. So I'm recording this. Um, today is, uh, what is today? It's uh, January uh, the, the 13th. Um, and so the, I'm recording this on this Wednesday. Um, there has been all types of turmoil uh, in, in our country and in the world. Um, 
this past year and, and this past week in particular, one week ago. And um, so one of the things I want to say to that is that is that we have this, as the church far too often uh, have we've come together or we have individually, uh, wherever we are, particularly on social media, we have we have publicly called upon somebody else. Um, we've publicly called upon and, and far too often as a church been engaged in, in earthly politics or how things in the earth go. So so we have some earthly team that we have called upon or some some name of a human being that we have called upon been, that we call upon. And we're not called to do that as a church. As a church, we come together. We keep the Sabbath holy because we call publicly on the name of the Lord. And so what that means is, as believers, that we believe that God is not only for us. I want to say that again. God is not only for us. God doesn't just call the church. God isn't just sovereign. He isn't just Lord of the church. We truly believe that God is King of kings and he is Lord of lords. We truly believe as a church and as Paul writes to the church at Ephesus in Ephesus chapter 6 that our battle in this world is not against anything in the world. It's a spiritual battle against spiritual forces of evil. Okay? So we are not for or against anything in the world. That's not who we are called to be as the church. And we are certainly not to call upon the creation. Not to call upon anything in creation. Remember, uh, when we uh, talked about about the way in which we make oaths, right? In the third uh, commandment, we're not to blaspheme or to abuse the name of God by cursing, perjury, or unnecessary oaths. And we do not make oaths um, by anything in creation, right? And so what often, unfortunately, happens, and we have been pre-programmed to do this, and we've been we've been really been indoctrinated to do this as Americans is that we call upon the name of cre create uh, of creation upon upon creatures to fix us to solve things to 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 figure things out and don't hear me say we're not interested in those things we're vitally interested in those things as a church because we believe that God's desire in the nations not just in our nation in our nation but in whatever nation you're watching this in God's desire is for his name to be magnified and glorified in the world. So whether you're in Australia or Indonesia or Kenya or Uganda or Germany or Russia or Chile or Brazil or Mexico or the United States, God desi God's desire is to work for the glory of his name. And so we as the church, we don't call upon the name of leaders. We are to reorient and reshape our lives in that we call upon the Lord. And then the next thing that we do is that we give Christian offerings for the poor. Um, it's why on a regular basis uh, we come and we have an offering. And, 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 and at our church anyway, that, that offering is part of, it's built into the order of service. Because it is a response of the faithfulness of God that we're faithful to give. So that's the first part of this. That's what we're called to do. This is the this is the this is the 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 acts that we do on on the Sabbath. And then the second thing is is really about the way that we rest. So these are the things that we do, and the things that we refrain from are that we rest from our evil works. Now I want to be clear here because when it's talking about evil works, it doesn't mean that everything that we do is bad. But it does mean that everything that we do is less good than the perfect that God does. Everything that we do, we do less good than God does, right? So in Isaiah, it talks about that even our good deeds are as filthy rags. I don't know if any of you have ever had a rag that has oil on it, but but you, you cannot use an oily rag to wipe anything up because what you end up doing is you just end up depositing oil over everything that you wipe. Now, that's fine if the oil that you have is butter and you're trying to grease a pan or something like that. You can just wipe it all over there, right? That's, that's probably a good thing. But even our best deeds, Isaiah says, are as filthy rags. And actually, the, the, the more literal translations are there as minstrel rags, which, which in that essence in the Old Testament is, is an allusion to talking about a blood that is death or dying. So what we do is we refrain 
even from what are the best deeds that we can do in the world. And the reason why we do that is because we recalibrate and we reorient that the Lord may work in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, so we begin to enter into, in a, and we engage in this in a regular weekly rhythm, sitting before the Lord, being still, disengaging from the work of this world, that we might have a foreshadowing of the eternal Sabbath. Okay, so the Old Testament Sabbath was not established just for us to have a day of rest. It was established for us to look forward to the eternal rest when we rest with God in eternal life. And so that's uh, the one question we have today. I said it'd be a little shorter. It's not. Uh, it's it's less questions, but but we need to remember the cat, the Sabbath and keep it holy. So we're going to close as we normally do, uh, going back to the first Lord's Day. And, and, and I think this is, again, important for us to remember in these days of turmoil, in these days of uncertainty, in these days in which we see images that we thought we would never see. The question is, what is our only comfort? What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I'm not my own, but I belong body and soul, both in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood. And he set me free from the power of the devil. He also preserves me in such a way that without the will of my heavenly father, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, all things must work together for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he assures me of eternal life and makes me heartily willing and ready from now on to live for him. Amen. God bless.